Our scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, reading from verse 50 to 58. Reading from verse 50 to verse 58. Here is what the word of God says. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory, O death. Where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And I would like to invite Brother Doug to come into the pulpit and bring us the word of God as the Lord has given him. That I am God Be still and know That I am God Be still and know That I am God I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Father God, indeed we, at this hour, at this moment, we want to be still and know that you are God, you are God who guides us, you are God who leads us, you are God who loves us in ways which we cannot describe by mere words. Our words are not enough to articulate the depth of gratitude that we have for Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, this morning, as we come before your throne of grace, it is my prayer, O oh Lord, that you open our minds, our hearts, our eyes to see your love, to see your glory in every situation, irrespective of where we are coming from. I thank you, Almighty God, that you will lead us to Calvary. You will lead us to know and understand that you are God Almighty. For, Father, indeed, even as we go through your message today, I pray that, Lord, nothing that is not coming from you will surface in the name of Jesus. Only your word, and only your word, only your word, almighty God, should, should reach your people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, our topic today is victory irrespective of circumstances. Victory 
irrespective of circumstances. We live in a world, my brothers and sisters, where every single day we are seeing onslaught after onslaught on mankind. And yet when you look at the word of God, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26, 27, and 28, there you get a good description of how you and me were created by God. We, we were created to take dominionship. Dominionship over the things in the water, over the things on land, over the things in the air. God created us, each and every one of us in this room, for dominionship. That reminds me of a story, and I'll try to paraphrase it, of an eagle where the egg was taken and put, placed amongst the chicken eggs. And when it hatched, of course, the little eagle moved around with the chickens. And so the, chick, the eagle thought it was a chicken. It would also hide under the mother chicken. Until one day a man came to the house when the eagle was growing and said, no, that is not a chicken. That's an eagle. And the owner said, yes, I know it's an eagle, but now it's a chicken. Because it has grown amongst chickens. It can't think anything different. It is a chicken. And the man says, no, it's an eagle. And so he says, well, try whatever you can, but it's a chicken. So trying throwing it up in the air, the eagle came down. The focus was on chickens. Until the man says, give me a few minutes with this eagle. Let me step aside. So he took the e little eagle, stepped aside, and he, he started actually causing it to check the landscape, to see the open skies. And he was speaking to it. You are meant to fly. You are meant... And the eagle, when he threw it up, came down amongst the chickens. Until he says, tell you what, I need a space where there are no chickens. I just need a space where it's me and the eagle. So he took it to a distance where there were only trees and nothing else but the open skies. And so he says, you are an eagle. And so the eagle looked around, there were no chickens. And there was a kind of panic. But when the man eventually threw up the eagle and it started soaring and it went, never came back. Never came back to the chickens. What is the message, my brothers and sisters? God, when he designed us, he designed you for governorship, for dominionship. Go and check it, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26, 27, and 28. We are designed for governorship. But, see, the enemy has placed us amongst chickens. So we look at the world around us. We see the limitations that have been placed around us. And we behave like chickens. And can you imagine Papa God looking at you and me and say, but I designed you to fly. I designed you to soar. But you are saying, no, but I'm looking and I'm seeing other chickens around so I can't fly. My brothers and sisters, you were designed for victory. Victory indeed in Jesus Christ. Even though the enemy came and destabilized the state of man, Christ came as that man who said, you are not a chicken, but you are an eagle. And of, of course, in Jesus, we can soar and we can fly. The word has been read to us this morning, but I want to look at particularly 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So your victory and my victory is not in education. Your victory and my victory is not in material resources. Your victory and my victory is not in connections. There are people who move around and say, look, I'm connected. And for sure, there are some who believe that when they pick up the phone and speak to a certain man, things happen. But guess what? We are connected to the creator of everything, Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 reminds us, everything was created by, through, and for Jesus Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters, we have the victory given to us by God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you a Christian, my brother? Are you a Christian, my sister? 
the message is clear you have victory irrespective of circumstances whatever circumstance is trying to tell you that you are a chicken just say no i am meant to fly it could be financial it could be medical it could be social whatever it is god designed you and he designed me for dominionship and so when you look at our scripture we are told about our final victory and look at it from verse 50 as it has been read to us now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god and let me emphasize again flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god it's not possible that flesh and blood inherits the kingdom of god and so my brothers and sisters we need to say so if flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god so what will and that is why brother paul will say verse 51 behold i tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed 52 in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed verse 53 for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when the the corruptible has put on incorruption and the mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory oh death where is your sting oh hades where is your victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law verse 57 but thanks be to god who gives us the victory through our lord jesus christ and so the conclusion of that scripture verse 58 then they say therefore my brothers my sisters be steadfast be immovable always abounding in the work of the lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the lord it cannot be in vain even when men do not recognize even when one no one is giving an applause to you remember your labor is not in vain keep on walking keep on moving i used to have a brother in south africa uh, where we would go to church with my wife and there was this guy who used to say when you are walking and you are doing the work of the lord do not watch for the applause do what is right even when there is no applause keep on walking if people decide to clap keep on walking why your labor is not in vain in the lord my brothers and sisters that underlining that i've made but thanks be to god who gives us the victory through our lord jesus christ that is enough whatever situation you are encountering whatever situation i am encountering my brothers and sisters we have the victory and so what i would like to cover quickly through this message irrespective of the circumstances that you and i are going through we have the victory and why do i say so there are certain specific three things that brother paul mentions here which i would like to emphasize number one flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god it's not possible god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and indeed flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god so i'll talk, I'll talk, talk a bit about that secondly mortality must put on immortality corruption must put on incorruption and lastly victory only through our lord jesus christ so don't search for victory anywhere else don't look for victory in connections in money in other things it doesn't exist there victory is only found in the lord jesus christ so let us go to number one flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god look at says what it says in verse 50 now this i say brethren this is brother paul that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god nor does corruption inherit incorruption 
So my brothers and sisters, why do we waste so much time investing in flesh and blood? Why do we waste so much time investing in corruption? Look at the construction that we do as human beings. We buy things for ourselves and we heap so much and yet we are told nothing of that will inherit the kingdom of God. May God help us. And so we are told when you look due to the inherited sin of Adam and Eve, everything on earth, the blood, the flesh is corrupt. And so we are told in John chapter 3 verse 3 to 5 when Jesus is explaining to us a fallen man cannot enter God's kingdom without being spiritually regenerated and he will not see the kingdom of God and that is what it should cause us my brothers and sisters to be restless when we are seeing men and women who have not received Jesus Christ walking around you should have a sense of agency to say I must do something because this man or this woman is headed to hell surely I was sinful at my at birth David would say sinful from the time my mother conceived me Psalms 51 and he was so much aware of his state that he had said surely so what shall I do Jesus Christ my brothers and sisters and so you find that these bodies that we have we call them jars of clay they are vessels of clay and they are destined for destruction but what is inside these jars of clay when you are hooked onto Jesus Christ you have treasure in earthen vessels that was spoken by brother Paul 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 and take note, even Brother Paul was saying that there is a wrestle, there is a match between the flesh and the spirit man. But the spirit man must win the game. The spirit man must overcome the flesh. So take note, my brothers and sisters, as we are sitting in here, as I'm standing here, I have two uh, elements that are so clear to me according, from, according to the word of God. The flesh and the spirit man. And sometimes the spirit man is so much suppressed by the flesh that people will begin to wonder, is that man a Christian? Is that, is that, is, is that lady a Christian? Why? Because the flesh is taking over. The flesh seems to have superiority. And yet we are told these jars of clay should be vessels that the spirit man uses to function here on earth. My brothers and sisters, you and I, we are faced with two choices. And the two choices are these. You can live according to the flesh or you can live according to the spirit. The question is, which of the two are you going to focus on? And the Lord Jesus Christ has already given us victory over the demands of the flesh. All you have to do is to focus on him and he will give you the victory as we have been assured. Let me move on to my second point. Now that we understand that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. My prayer, my brothers and my sisters, is that we will not waste time focusing on the things that will perish. But today I will be restless, take my diary and say, God, I want to invest in the kingdom of God on a daily basis and what is it that I'm going to do I'm not going to disappear from this earth I'm not saying that we should just fly away from this planet no stay in it and use the flesh and blood to invest in the incorruptible to invest in eternity be so conscious about it on a daily basis in your diary if the end of the day has come and you have not invested in the kingdom then say, I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well. I'm aware of people who, on a daily basis, they actually check the stock market. They check their wealth. They phone the bank manager and they say, how much interest did I earn today? They are checking their investments. And when they hear, oh, no, 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 you made a good profit today, they sleep well. But they don't know that what they are sleeping well on is in corruption. 
We should say, what did I do today that contributes to my investment in the kingdom? Write it in my diary, and I should sleep well knowing that no man, nothing can steal from that which I've invested in the kingdom of God. Keep a diary, please, and take note of these things. So, number two, mortality must put on immortality, which means while I still have got this window of life, I must daily invest on the afterlife. You know, we, myself and my wife, we, put, we bought ourselves a grave in Glen Forest there. And I remember one of the guys that I met, I, I asked to prepare the grave, the grave place. He was saying, why are you doing it? I said, because the word is clear. Unless Jesus Christ comes now, I'm destined for the ground. But while I'm destined for the ground, every single day that I have, I want a reminder that tells me that I'm destined for the ground, but every day I must do something for the after the grave has come. Because that is not the final place. Victory is found in Jesus. Therefore, while we are still alive like this, my brothers and sisters, while you know and I know that we are headed one way, we will, of course, shed off these physical bodies. But the word of God tells us in verse 53, this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. How are you doing it? And how am I doing it? Because I often meet some of my colleagues, senior executives. I travel far and wide and I see people who when they walk, they are always with their hands in the pockets. Level of comfort, chest high. And when you ask him, he says, look, I have a good portfolio. I have a very good portfolio. I've got houses in Cape Town. I've invested in, in Indonesia. I'm on the Beijing Stock Exchange and so forth. Then you look at it and you say, wow, wow. But Paul says, corruptible. It will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what is it that you are proud of today? Is it falling into the corruptible category or the incorruptible? Brother Paul is saying in verse 53, this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. How do we do it, my brothers and sisters? The natural born bodies, we occupy these bodies, are stained with sin. And therefore, they are destined only to exist temporarily. You can't live above 200 years. I always use 200 as a safe figure, because just in case, you can. But you cannot cross 200 which means it's temporary. They are built for functioning on planet Earth. These bodies are vessels for functioning. But the sad thing is that sometimes we function for ourselves and we don't function for the creator who gave us the capacity to soar for him. So you look at Romans chapter 6, verse 17. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies so that you obey they are evil, the evil desires. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, I was in the village a week ago dealing with a situation which saddened me, saddened my wife. And we were looking at it. And I said, but why did you do this? And this is a man of God. This is a woman of God. My brothers and sisters, Paul says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. What are you obeying today? Which your body is dictating? Because let me tell you, these bodies, they can dictate. And you find yourself running and obeying what they are saying. The spirit man in you should say, no, I will not tolerate nonsense in my system. And you walk according to the word of God. My brothers and sisters, these temporary bodies, they are, we call them dying bodies. That's why when I look in the mirror every morning, I see more gray hair. And I know where it's going. I see the system is collapsing. And I know where it is going. My brothers and sisters, we live in this world where these bodies 
are to be disposed, but there is something in them that is much deeper than we often think about. These earth-bound bodies are sin-corrupted. Mortal bodies, they must put on immortality. And how do we put on immortality? Jesus Christ. And the word is very clear. My last point on this one, my brothers and sisters, from what source will you today run to find immortality? 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10 gives us an answer by saying, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So when you walk around carrying the gospel, my brothers and sisters, speaking the word of God, you have a dish of immortality available to men and women who are willing to eat of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters, life is brought through Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus brought life and immortality through the power of the gospel. And that is why the gospel must be preached. And relentlessly so, preach the gospel. Whether in good times or in bad times, preach the gospel. That is what the word of God tells us. Let us continue to preach the gospel. My brothers and sisters, my last point, victory only through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other source. When you look at our planet Earth, I always say we are space dwellers. You know, no, 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 there is space out there. We also are space dwellers. Why? Our Earth is a ball floating in space. And in that space, Jesus Christ is the only solution. Jesus Christ is the only answer for men and women requiring how do we get incorruption into our corruptible bodies. Verse 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Three points I would like to say here, my brothers and sisters. On the cross, death and sin were defeated. Completely defeated. He made a public spectacle of the demons and all these forces that try to convince us that we are chickens. We are not chickens. And just as God the Father has promised, when Christ rose again from the grave, he had the victory in his hands. And that victory, he passed it on to us. And so through his resurrection, we too have victory. What is whispering to you today to say, no, 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 you don't have victory. Say, no, I have victory in Jesus Christ. Whether it is a health situation, a financial situation, a social situation, it's temporary. You have victory completely done and completed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, my brothers and sisters, we are reminded of the love of God. Greater love is no one than this, that he lay down his own life for his friends. John chapter 15 verse 18. And 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. The 5 verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So when you and I have faith in Jesus Christ, you are already operating in the victory of God over a health situation over a financial situation, even over a social situation, whatever it is, you're already operating in victory. I remember talking to someone overseas, and he was saying, how are you managing in Zimbabwe? I said, it is by grace. So uh, what is the situation? I said, it is by the grace of the Lord. He said, what is this grace you keep on talking about? <laughs> Can I find it? Can I find it in a shop? Can, can I? Because it looks like in a difficult situation that you are in, this grace keeps on surfacing. One of our directors in South Africa phoned me early last week, and they were having serious power cuts in the whole of South Africa, and they had not experienced it. So he said, but how did you, do you manage? I said, it is by the grace of God. He said, I also need this grace. <laughs> you see, because some of them have been so much in comfort, they never knew what... A, Lord shedding, what is it? 
and they have one load shedding in a month and there is panic. I have load shedding all the days of the year and I do not panic. <laughs> what? Victory in Jesus Christ. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Even when you are in a place of discomfort, you can tell yourself, Jesus, you are my victory. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world in its, all its forms. You are an overcomer. That is why we sing that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Because when you walk through the desert, Jesus. When you walk through the fire, Jesus. When you walk through the rivers, Jesus. And they will not overflow you. When you cling on to Jesus, my brothers and sisters, there is no better friend. There is no better assistant. And I remember in 2004, when I was um, thrown in a dungeon somewhere, and I, my wife could not even reach to where I was. My mother saw me in a distance and she walked away in, in tears. And I realized, oh, all these people cannot actually help me. There is one, Jesus. Because he was there with me. So it doesn't matter what situation. When men have disappeared from you, remember there is one who sticks with you. And that is Jesus. And only him. My brothers and sisters, my last point. Jesus Christ has secured complete victory. He has made it possible for anyone who believes in him to have this victory. The choice is yours. The choice is an individual choice whether you will say, yes, I will follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. My brothers and sisters, that is the victory we have in Jesus Christ. I would like to play a song and you can look at it. It's actually in hymn 426. It basically just cements this issue of victory. You can sing along if you want, but I have placed it here just to emphasize that point of victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. When you leave this place and you are going wherever you are going, you encounter whatever situation, just know this one thing. You have victory in Jesus Christ. And I'm not sure uh, uh, um, if you can keep it, uh, if you can keep connected, I want to play a video on it because I noticed that it has come off the screens. So I will I'll, 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 um, play a video on it. And it talks about victory in Jesus Christ. Now, I know that sometimes when we sing these hymns, sometimes the tune is so nice and we sing along. I want you to look at every word as this team is singing victory in Jesus and reflect on what the words mean. My brothers and my sisters, there is no victory that surpasses the victory that Jesus Christ has given us. Complete and total. And you don't need anyone to convince you. You don't need anyone to whisper anything to you. Just tell yourself I'm an eagle because Jesus has attained it for me. Look at what it says in Psalm 20, verse 6 to 7. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. That's our Jesus. That's the Jesus. And he says to us in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, go and tell others of this good news. Go and spread the good news. Victory in Jesus, irrespective of the circumstances that are surrounding you today. Let me conclude by John 13, verse 17. If you know these things, blessed are you, my brother. Blessed are you, my sister, if you do them. Victory in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We glorify you. Your message to us is so simple. Jesus has done everything for us. There is no more struggling. There is no more anxiety. Did you not tell us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, do not be anxious about, about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, present your request to God and the peace of God that surpasses or transcends all understanding 
will guard your minds, will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Thus, this corruption is gained in corruption in Christ Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let us rise and sing our closing hymn, 407. As we thank God, as we reflect on his wonderful love and his victory, we can truly say, because he lives, I confess tomorrow. I don't mind what kind of situation I'm going through, the kind of rivers or the deserts that may present themselves. I confess tomorrow because he lives. Lead us, please. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives oh fear is gone because I know yes I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. Here is God because I know, yes, I know, He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He lives, and then one day. Across the river, I find life's fire. No war with pain, and then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and. I know he lives because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives oh fear is gone because I know because I know yes I know the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. And let us have our benediction coming from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. And it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. amen. Have a wonderful, productive week for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.